got me my first guitar also, and I'm very indebted to her. She called me, she made me kneel, and my spelling was N-W-L, ideally, because it, kneel means blue. But too much rock and roll, I turned one of the E's into an I. And uh, I spell my name as N-E-I-L. Anyway, so yes, I got my first guitar, and uh, my and guitar being the guitar, it, the entire vocabulary for us came from the West. Which means that, you know, you learn to play songs, you learn to, you know, play chords, you did the usual thing that exists as a method in Western music, broadly. So I did the same thing, you know, I, I played lots of uh, Beatles, I played lots of blues, then I got introduced to Johann Sebastian Bach and uh, I tried to study him and of course, uh, you know, some amount of jazz too. Right, and uh, I was a teenager and uh, you know, we were like playing music at school and you know, playing Simon and Garfunkel, Beatles and uh, you know, lo lots of deep purple and all, all kinds of rock and roll, you know. That really took my, took over my life. Okay, and uh, at this point of time, when I was about 15 or 16, I met a, a very important person in my life. Somebody uh, who was an architect, and he lived in England before that, and uh, he was a, great uh, classical guitar player. I mean, and he wrote songs in Bengali and stuff like that. So, and this gentleman actually gifted me my first classical guitar. And that was something that was very hard to find in Kolkata in those days, in fact. It was like a real struggle. It's not like now, you know, where you get everything in easy shops and stuff. I got my first guitar. And uh, it's something that changed my first classical guitar. I remember it was a made in Spain, humble classical guitar. And I started playing a lot on it. In fact, my uncle who taught me the basics of guitar playing had visited Paris uh, some, a couple of years before that. And he got this book called El Arte de la Flamenco. And from that he learned some, some himself and he taught me. So that's how I got introduced to this beautiful art form, which is flamenco. A very sophisticated style of guitar playing, which has uh, its uh, roots in the Arab world. I mean, you know, Morocco, I mean Morocco would be North Africa, right? But there is a strong Arabic influence in flamenco, right? So these are things I discovered later. And my uncle taught me that. And then I started listening to a lot of Paco de Lucia, who inspired me like, and does so even now. So listening to Paco de Lucia, trying to play Bach, playing Beatles songs, playing Paul Simon, all this was like wonderful and I was like totally consumed by music. Yes, I had my academics going side by side too, but you know, rock and roll did consume me. So that side of my life got a little neglected. Uh, okay, so, uh, I got to my 20s and you know, eventually I formed, we formed a band and we were playing all around India, playing lots of rock music and lots of covers, etc., etc. And we were actually gigging all around India. And I'm talking about the 90s, when uh, globalization hadn't really taken off, but it, it was starting off too, you know, I mean, 
And uh, for all of us, you know, it was, um, it was a strange time. As a, I mean, I wasn't so interested in politics or other things, uh, but I did have a lot of interest in music and people. And you know, playing this music and playing, gigging or all, playing gigs all around India, it was like really wonderful. At the same time, around the same time, I got to work with some, uh, on some music that I wrote in Bangla. Bangla being my mother tongue. And uh, it was like a great experience for me. An album called Podcast Deke, I, we, our band, Crosswinds, we recorded it and, uh, and we recorded it and it got released in some people liked it, but over I mean over, I mean over the years now I hear a lot of people seem to be influenced by it. Even like I was very pleased to meet some people here in Bangladesh who said, "Oh, we love your songs," etc., etc. And uh, well, music doesn't need a passport to get from one country to another, so that's what happened. However, at that point of time, something happened to me. When I heard back those recordings, they, they sounded like, you know, it could be from, from the Latin American world, it could be from Spain, it could be rock and roll, it could be, you know, some funk music, etc., etc. But something that hit me at that point of time was, you know, I, something inside me told me that, you know, Neil, yeah, it's, this is great, it's fantastic, but I mean, you are from a land, you know, where, you know, where there is very beautiful music all around you. I mean, you've got like fantastic traditions. I mean, be it folk, be it, be it classical, and be it anything, contemporary, everything. And in India, you know, every 300 or 400 kilometers, roughly, I'm not sure about the numbers, but we have the language changes, the food changes, the people change. I mean, there are, I mean, we've got some millions of languages there, you know, some 22 or, I don't remember the number. But that's what India is like. It's amazingly plural, you know. It's very inclusive. We've got so many religions, we've got uh, so many languages, so many different kinds of music, so many different you know, people. I mean, it changes. I mean, it's quite crazy how we are together after all this, you know. So that was a point in time when I decided, okay, Neil, you gotta check out stuff in your backyard. You have to look at, you know what, what is there? So, as luck would have it, I mean, I'll just say a little more thing. I didn't want to play the sitar. I, I couldn't play the sarod because, you know, you need a nail, you need, needed to grow nails on your left hand, so which I couldn't do as a guitar player. So the closest thing I could find was the veena, which uh, the veena as in, uh, the Saraswat Veena, which comes from the south of India, which is uh, Carnatic, it comes uh, under the Carnatic music tradition. So I found a teacher in Kolkata who, after lots of trials and everything, he decided, okay, you come over. He sent me back like many times. I mean, okay, don't come today. No, I don't have time today. Four, five, six times, I think. And then he started teaching me and in fact he, his blessings uh, were like a veena given to me. So I started playing the veena, little bit. I didn't pursue it so much, but from the veena I got a few techniques, you know. Something that he taught me was like open 
opening a window for me. It was like saying, Neil, just look, look, look outside the possibilities. Look at the melodic possibilities. You know, you, you were, you already, you've played pianistic notes, which are like, which are like definite frequencies, defined frequencies. And you just play those, but when you do that, you are actually accessing all the frequencies between these two set points. And that was very exciting to me. This is something which is uh, used a lot in uh, rock and blues and jazz and things like that. But in India, it's, it's a very sophisticated, well-defined thing. So, I mean, thus started my journey into, you know, Indian music. That means, you know, I started accessing melodic uh, ideas, studying mel melodies, you know, studying rhythm structures. And, you know, the subcontinent has like a fantastic, it's got a very sophisticated melodic and a rhythmic system. It doesn't have harmony. So I started accessing that, thanks to my teachers. And eventually I moved to Chennai, which is uh, south of India. And uh, I continued my music studies under a very able, uh, a very great music teacher by the name of uh, Chitravina Ravikiran. And, uh, I started studying and also my, I had become a professional musician by then. And uh, I was working in the music industry, you know, I've worked with like greats like Yair Rehman and many South Indian music directors and all that. And I was also like scoring music for advertising, films and all these things. So I start, start to, to, you know, consolidate all these ideas that I've picked up. My studies of Western harmony included, you know, music of Beatles, Bach, Thelonious Monk, and many other greats. And I'm, for me, you know, my, I feel that, you know, the guitar I play is a convergence of all these traditions that exist on this planet. And I'm very grateful for that. And, uh, and I would also like to mention my first teacher's name, uh, who is Gautam Chatterjee, who was my maternal uncle, who taught me the basics of guitar playing. And you know, that's how I started. And uh, that's pretty much it. I would like to play a little short piece and end. Mm -hmm. 